fellows are back at the table and we're going to be talking about the Havoc Battle Belt. We're proud to be carrying this. It's actually the first belt we have ever carried on our website. We've been looking at them and testing them out. We've looked at everything from Faro to the Ronin Belt. Um, and this, this was the one that provided the most versatility and the durability. The, the belt itself is just um, it's made out of really good material and we have put it through its pace. As a matter of fact, one of these belts is actually um, overseas right now. It's still getting the work out. But we're gonna build this belt out today and uh, kind of show you how we put a belt together and why and, uh, and look at it. But let me just go over the features of this belt for and what makes it unique. The first thing you'll notice, just like with every other belt, it's got the vertical chambers here where you can take, you know, Molly, or whatever attachment method you want to use and run it straight down through here. But you'll also notice every now and then between here and every one of these is this piece. And what that piece does is it allows you to run things horizontally as well as vertically. And you know, that's, that's what gives this belt the versatility that we appreciate because now you can take a tourniquet and run a tourniquet this way, or you can take a magazine pouch and run a magazine pouch like that horizontally or you can take a blade and you can run your blade horizontally uh, and, you know, so now you've got options on here so what else about this belt it's um it comes in a couple different sizes uh it's got a uh, a good system for taking up your taking up your excess it's got velcro on the end as opposed to just a running tail that you have to then lash together but with this you have the option of either shoving it up inside a piece of elastic or you just run it back down here and hook it and there it is once you get it sized the other thing about it is on this buckle you've noticed the ears on this the ears are longer right so you can pop this thing out really quickly and get out it's easier to get in and out of this thing if you needed to it's, uh, it's got teggers inside it's a lightweight belt i mean this is like maybe a p mag and a half in weight uh, and if you compare the say a Ferro concepts uh, bison belt they're basically just, they're really close to the same in terms of the thickness, right? The dimensions otherwise are the same, right? It's the same width. It's about the same weight, but it's got that added versatility of being able to go horizontally. It's a two-piece belt system. This is the, the inner belt. And they offer the inner belt in two different types. This one is the ultra-thin version, and then they have a padded version too. Uh, if you want something, it's basically the same uh, this way, but it's it's got padding uh, on it, so it makes it on this side, and makes it a little bit more uh, more comfortable. If you've got the uh, female Velcro, if you will, there, male Velcro here, and so it just sticks to it. Once you put this through your belt loops, then this goes over the top of your pants and connects to the belt. I use this as my everyday belt. It's just got a really good stiffener in it. Compare it again back to the Feral Concepts belt here. You know, this one is just, just folds up. You know, there's really not much stiffener going on there. This one has taggers running down the center. Ball this thing up and it's gonna pop back to its original shape. The other neat thing about it is it's got a very, very cool, simple design. You take this, you put it where you want it, boom, you're done, right? There's no metal in this thing at all. So for you folks that are concerned about going through airports, this is your non-metallic uh, option right here. I carry this gun on this all the time, right? So that's the inner belt there. First thing, we're gonna lay the belt open. We're going to number these chambers. The reason we number them, it helps us to um, one, find the center. But if you ever have to change your belt up, it makes uh, putting it back in the same spot easy. Trying to quantify as much as you can and simplify your life as much as you can. So we've got uh, 22, 22 blocks on here, which means right here is going to be our center point. It helps us figure out where we're going to put something that might wind up in the center of our belt, such as an IFAC. Like this one, right? We would put that right in the center line. There it is, 11, right there. We're gonna actually put on here though, the roll one, and there's the center of the roll one. We Come down, drop it in right on top. And now our Velcro field is still intact, 
and the roll one just rolls right down there. Or if you want to go the other way, you could take it and you can run it underneath like that and let it dangle that way. See them done both ways. This is probably the better way to go with this thing. If you're not going to carry it on your plate carrier, that's the preferred way of doing it. We've already figured out where we're going to put our IFAC. We've already got two pistol mags on here. And we would normally take a fast mag for your rifle magazine and put it as close to this as you can get it, just so that you save real estate on your belt. But you can't really do that because you've got a magazine pistol that's going to come out of here like this. And you've got a rifle magazine like that. And so if you put them right here, these two are going to run into each other. So we're going to space it over one. And that allows you to still access this without having this get in the way. So we will drop this down and all right so that's one way to attach this to it you could also use malice malice clips for the same thing all right so that's got our Fast mag, two pistol mags at a 45. And the next thing we're gonna look at is where do we put our holster? We're gonna use a True North Concepts modular holster adapter. Where's that holster gonna land on your body? If you've never done it before, put the belt around your waist and then find out where does that holster need to land? Where do you want that gun to be? Do you want it literally on your side, right? Do you literally want it at three o'clock or if you're a lefty at uh, nine o'clock or do you want it slightly to the rear, slightly to the front? So you gotta figure that out. For me, I know exactly where I want it to land on my body. And one of the benefits of using this numbering system in your blocks like this is that if the belts are roughly the same in terms of size, you can transfer those numbers in these blocks over to another belt. The older, belt that I used for the longest time that my holster adapter was landing right on four in the five block. We should be able to take this one, flip it over, and go to the four and the five block, and that's where this is going to land. You're going to use these metal bars. You have to be careful when you're putting these together. You're going to have a tendency to want to run them through the path of least resistance. All right, so here's our four and our five block here, all right? The path of least resistance is gonna be just this easy piece right here on a normal belt. It's gonna be, you know, just the, that thin, as that's actually a pretty thin, pretty thin strip. If you get in a fight with somebody and they go for your gun and they start yanking around on your gun while it's in the holster, these come loose, he's got your gun. You wanna attach this thing to something that's got some strength to it. Now there comes the benefit of the havoc. You've got this, heavy duty piece of Tegris going here that allows you to mount things this way, but it also comes through there. So that gives you some nice thick material that you can drop one of these down behind. And that gives you a, a way to mount your MHA behind a sturdy piece of equipment there. So there's my four, and I'm gonna drop this in on my five. Now I've got a, a decent mounting platform. We want the, the rubber washers to go between this piece of metal and this piece of metal. So we'll start with the first one. Well, the next thing we have to do is put on the Safarland receiver plate of our QLS. So using historical information really from the previous holster, I know where I like mine, right? So these markings tells me that bolt go through here high and through here low and through the bottom one off to the side. And what that allows me to do is to have my holster at a specific cant that works well for me. But we're gonna do the, the top two first. The reason we're going to do that, uh, the holster adapter, this, comes with its own metallic leg strap that goes in there and then you weave your piece through there. 
I don't particularly care for this because when I'm in a vehicle and I go to sit, this doesn't move. You know, this whole thing now is strapped to my leg and it's just one gigantic piece that makes it really difficult to have a, to have a seat and bend your leg without a hinge going on here. So I use the Swivla <laughs> S-W-I-V-L-A and it's by Edgar Sherman Designs. The way this thing works is in, it slips inside here. That's why we didn't put that other screw in first. And what this lets you do is as your leg moves, this can allow the thigh strap to move with you. And that's pretty comfortable. So now you can see how that gives my holster a particular cant so that when my gun is in, the grip, instead of being perfectly vertical, is a little bit to the rear. So now we've got the swivel installed. We just need to run this, run your leg strap through. And when you take this uh, apart, remember how this comes off because that is different than that, right? You want it to go in like this. And so once you start the running into this, you're gonna come up from the front and work it down that and come to the back. That helps lock it in place so there's not a lot of sliding going on. And I apologize if that's a, some juvenile information that you already knew, but thought we'd cover it anyway. And until we get it sized, we're just gonna run the trail end back through the triglide just to get it out of the way. This is way too much excess here. We'd, we'd come through and just cut it, but then you take the running end, fold it over, and just take a piece of 100 mile an hour tape and just tape it right there. Here's your leg strap. The holster, the adapter, we've got the IFAC, we've got the speed mag, and we've got canted pistol mags. This is a micro dump pouch. So we're going to put that right here. But we got to get this up out of the way. Come down from the top. It's made out of a super thin material. It's got a little cinch here so you can tighten it up. It tucks up in there nice and tightly. Take this, we're going to lay it on top and it's going to, you see it's got multiple slit options here. You've got, you got one right here, and then there's one below it. So if the belt was thinner, you would aim for that one. But we're going to aim for the last one. All right, and then we'll do the same with the other side. And there we go. The next thing we've got is a tourniquet. The belt is going to be here. And, we, and in terms of size wise, this is where it needs to be to fit. Now, the way we figured this out is put the belt on, that make a mark. This tail end is gonna land on that mark. That tells me that it's in the right spot every time and that that's gonna work without having to do much adjustment to that. So I can take this end, we're just gonna get it out of the way for the time being shove it up in here because we're going to run our tourniquet in a horizontal manner. So our tourniquet we're going to have staged on our right side right here. So it's just Molly's in. We're going to take this and stick it as far forward as we can get it. So that means it's going to go in to this piece right here. So we're going to have to get our flat screwdriver. It's over here and going to lift so now you've got your horizontally run pouch right there your gear and take your time with it make sure that you're happy with the way it's set up make sure that everything works 
for you, that it's sized for you, the little bitty details you know, that seem mundane and small might actually be worth the effort. Take your time with them. Make sure you get it exactly like you want it. Just pretend like your life depends on it, because it might. So that's the Havoc Belt. Guys, go to our website, AmericanKX.com. Check it out. Got any questions, put them in the comments below. And we would uh, be happy to be happy to help you get one and get it in your hands. Thanks, guys, for watching. Take care of yourselves.